guys. First Corinthians chapter 3. Take when I left you. Yeah. <laughs> right, we there a couple more weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Did you bring a lunch bill? Yeah. Well, the reason we have to spend so much time in places like this is because I picked up a Dr. Ruckman book over there yesterday when I was studying this chapter. You know what Dr. Ruckman said about verse 14? If any man's work or verse 15, if any man's work shall be burned. You know what Dr. Ruckman said about that verse? He said, notice the man doesn't burn, but the works. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'll wait. Amen. <laughs> the word works ain't nowhere in the chapter. Mm -hmm. Nope. Right. Right. That has been taught in Baptist churches as a judgment of our works for so long that you can't get it out of people's heads. Right. No matter how many times Paul uses the word it, work, it, what sort it is, every man's work, it shall be revealed by fire, the day shall declare it, it's singular. Your works is not what's being built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at this while we got to spend so much time here. Because how many of you believe the judgment seat of Christ is an important issue? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, it's not just some doctrine. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yes, sir. Who knows how soon? But we must all appear yes, sir. before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. That every one may receive things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God says, every knee shall bow unto me and every tongue shall confess yes, unto God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Paul says, therefore every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Now Paul's going to talk about giving or, or, or accounting of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. But with me it is a very small thing if I be judged of you. But every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Yeah. So the judgment seat of Christ is important. And knowing the importance of that judgment seat, you need to know what to do in order to present yourself before God one day. Yes, sir. And if it's about works, then I would ask all of you which ones. Mm -hmm. If it's about works, then I would encourage you all of, all of you put your Bibles on the shelf and get out there and do something. Mm -hmm. But that ain't what it is here. Two things, two, the letter S gets add, added to two things in this chapter. Work and reward. There are no rewards in Paul's epistles. Every time he uses the word, it's singular. And there are no rewards here. He was like, yeah, if you suffer loss, you'll, you'll suffer loss of rewards. No. That's not what Paul said. That's right. He said, if the work abides, you shall receive a reward, and if it burn up, you shall suffer loss. And what's been judged is a singular work, not works. Amen. Amen. And I, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that somebody like Ruckman could stand, and I love Dr. Ruckman, mm -hmm. but how he can stand and critique everybody, you know, you know they got to add to the Word of God, take away from the Word of God, and then add an S to something like that. Mm -hmm. It means none of us are beyond it. Yeah. Yeah. When you already got your mind made up, on a doctrine, 
The Bible's just there to back up what you already believe. So it's important, guys. Last week, Paul, Paul says here, he begins right here, he says, now. This thing can work. I don't know what's wrong with this thing sometimes. Now right here, beginning in verse 12, Paul says, now. He's getting ready to lay out some things. When you see that word now, Paul's getting ready to start expounding on some things. And he said, I have laid the foundation, another built it thereupon, let every man take heed how he built it thereupon, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now if any man build upon this foundation. Mm -hmm. Number one, you've got to know what foundation you're building upon. Amen. Right. Amen. That's right, Paul. Not everything calling itself Christian in this world is building upon the same foundation. Amen. 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 Roman Catholics are not building upon my foundation. You got in mind. They're not building upon Paul's foundation. Amen. Yeah. Paul said that the grace of God given unto him as a wise master builder, he had laid the foundation. We looked at this stuff last week. <laughs> but what you need to understand is Paul's getting ready to start laying out what's built upon this foundation, what is being built at this present time, and then there's a day in the future where that work is going to be manifest. And so, taking heed how we build, every man's work shall be made manifest. We're all building upon this foundation right now at this present time, and then one of these days it's going to be made manifest. <laughs> Not only is it going to be made manifest, the day shall declare it. The day. Yes, sir. See, Bible talks like that, people just like, what day? <laughs> Remember when he said over there, he says, Onesiphorus, he says, he says, God grant mercy unto Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain, Lord grant unto him that he may obtain or find mercy in that day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember when he says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me in that day. Amen. Remember when he said, I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What day? The day that Jesus Christ comes to judge the quick and the dead at His kingdom and at His appearing. Amen. Amen. Yep. It's why He's going to tell you in chapter 4, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Yeah, the day is going to declare your work. Because that work is going to be revealed by fire. We're going to get into all that. What day is he talking about? He's talking about the day the Lord comes. The day of Christ. Yes. Amen. You're going to receive something. You're going to receive for things done in His body. Good or bad. Yeah. Amen. Now thank God hell's off the table. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, what, what we have to understand here is what we looked at last week is what God is building. We got some, some people in here that, that weren't here. So what is God building? How can you properly build if you don't even know what He's building? Mm -hmm. Good point. You know... I show up and, or I tell somebody, you know, I'm building a skyscraper, you know, with steel beams and, and all this stuff. A man shows up with, with wood, you know, wood, you know, wooden nails and hammers and he don't know what we're building. Yeah. See, God is building something today and in order for you to properly build upon the foundation, you have to know the foundation, you have to know what God's building and how to build upon it. Amen. 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 Now in Ephesians 1, 20 through 21, God's already did something. He has wrought a power 
God has already wrought a power toward us. Paul's prayer is that your eyes will be enlightened to understand and to know what is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward, which He wrought in Christ. Amen. When? When He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the... <laughs> Amen. For what? <laughs> All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Meaning a change of power is going to take place in the world to come. Amen. The people running the show in this world are not going to be the ones running the show in the world to come. Amen. But one thing's going to stand sure. Jesus Christ is going to be far above every name. Amen. Not only in this one, but that Amen. which is to come also. Yes, sir. Amen. Preacher. Amen. 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 Preacher. Amen. Amen. Now you see these heavenly places and far above. Ephesians 6, 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the Darkness of what? This there it is again. Yep. Don't you love the Bible? Yep. The course, Ephesians has already talked about the course of this world, the principalities and powers, not only in this world, he's talking about the rulers of the darkness of, the, of this world against spiritual wickedness and what? Well, that ain't heavenly. There's a difference between high places and heavenly places. Amen. Amen. Now these, these principalities and powers are in high places, but Christ is in the heavenly places far above. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning these high places are far below where Christ ascended. There you go. Amen. You get it? Mm -hmm. So right there. These, these things here are in high places and they rule. Remember that light and darkness all the way back there in the beginning. God said, let there be light. He separated the light from, he divided the light from the darkness. There ain't a sun, moon, and stars until three days later. Right. And none of you have ever seen that light right there. Amen. God dwells in that light. Psalm, Psalm 104 said he covers himself with light as with a garment. Yeah. Paul said he dwells in the light that no man may approach unto, that no man can approach unto. Mm -hmm. yep. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Starting to make sense when Paul says that he hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood yeah. who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven that are in earth both visible yeah. and invisible whether they be thrones dominions principalities powers all things were created by him and for him amen amen got it this light and darkness right here. And so what is the kingdom of God's dear son? It's all of these things right here mm -hmm. that he is now the heir of and his job is to reconcile all these things back to God the Father. Right? But that's not all he did. When he raised Christ from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power, and put all things under his feet. And means in it he did something else when he raised Christ from the dead. Mm -hmm. Not only did he put all things under his feet, all power and principality and might and dominion were put under the feet of Christ. He gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Yep. Amen. Up there is the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, guys, when you read stuff like this, you, Paul is giving you location <laughs> and relationships that you're never going to find listening to Nassar or anybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. He's using words like above and high and heavenly and head over and under his feet. And... Now, as relationship to the feet of Christ, 
What's under his feet? All things. But as relationship to the church, what's the church under? His feet or under his head? So what is the church? It's his body between his feet and his head. Which is why Paul says this fullness up here that means that God has taken us that were dead in sin. Think about that. Have you ever been, have you ever drove down the road and think, you know, I could make good use of that dead raccoon on the side of the road. <laughs> Do you see what God did? That when we were dead in sins hath quickened us already. Past tense. Get it. Hath quickened us together with who? Christ. By grace you are saved. And hath raised us up together. And made us sit together where? In high places or in heavenly places? In heavenly places. Then yep. you're seated up here with Him. Amen. Far above all this. Yep. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Why did God do that? Oh, wow. That in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace. <laughs> How's He going to show? In His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The kindness God is showing you right now in His grace is so that we as the church can show forth in the ages to come the exceeding riches of the grace of God. Man? Yeah. Yeah. Now understand that. God is doing something. Notice this. Quicken, raised, seated. This is all things God has done and is in the process of doing right now for the church. What is the church? It is a people that have been quickened, raised, and seated in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Why? To the ages to come. Now, God isn't doing this yet. This is what He's doing. Quickening, raising, and seating men in the heavenly places. That's the present thing that God is doing. Yep. Amen. Amen. Now, what does it mean in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus? The kindness that God has shown us through Christ is what we are going to show in the ages to come. Amen? Amen? Now Paul's going to explain it. This verse never gets quoted within its context. Right. People just use this as an evangelism passage. Mm -hmm. right. For by grace are you saved through faith. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not its context. Right. The context is about the ages to come. He's getting ready to explain. Mm -hmm. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship, created where? What is that creation in Christ? It's a quickened, raised, exalted creature seated in the heavenly place. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's right, brother. For what purpose? That we were created on the good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in. And what do you think those good works are? It's this stuff right here. Yes. What God is doing by His grace towards you right now is so that you in the ages can, to come can show the exceeding riches of His grace. Amen, brother. Amen. Wow. The reason He quickened you, raised you, and seated you in the heavenly places was so that you could show the ages to come the exceeding riches of His grace. Mm. In the kindness that he's shown you through Christ Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now notice this workmanship of God is by what? Grace. Through what? Grace. What do you think is going to be judged at the judgment seat? See? What are you going to show in the ages to come? The exceeding riches of His what? Grace. 
How do you receive grace? Through what? Amen. Amen. You follow me? Yeah. This whole work that we're talking about is what Paul calls the work of faith time and time again in the scripture. Mm -hmm. It is a work that God is doing within the believer by his grace through faith to create you in Christ and prepare you unto good works that he ordained that we should walk in. <clears throat> He's getting us ready for the world to come. He's getting us ready for the ages to come. Unto him be glory, God, Unto him be glory by the church through Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. That's Ephesians 3.21. Yep. You know why God created us? To the praise of the glory of his grace. Read Ephesians, man. Yep. And so if God is doing this work by grace through faith, Paul said, who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers? Ministers of what? Grace. You know who Paul and Apollos were? They were a gift of the grace of God to us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Who are these men? They were ministers of the grace of God. Yes. This is why Paul said, don't glory in Paul or Cephas for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas. Yeah. Amen. Man. Thank you, you see how to think about this stuff? Mm -hmm. Who is Paul and Apollos? Ministers by whom you what? Believe. Even as the Lord what? Gave. So what were these men? They were, they were ministers given by God to do this work of faith. The whole work is being done by the ministry of God's grace ministered through faith. Amen. There it is right there. There's the grace of God. That grace is ministered. The minister of that grace ministers that grace through what? And then that work of faith produces this workmanship of God. Mm -hmm. Man. Right here is the co-laborers with God. Remember when Paul said we are laborers together with God? That aspect right there is the, the co-labor with God. The minister of God's grace. Right here is the mechanical means by which God's grace is operating. You need these two things right here for this grace to do this work over here. You need a minister of that grace and that grace, once it's ministered, can only be received through faith. Amen. Not religion, not duty, and anything else. Amen. The only way God's grace is going to work effectually in you to perform this workmanship right here is through faith. Amen. Be faith. Be faith. So when you see this, what do you think is going to be made manifest in that day? What's going to be made manifest is what you built through this process right here. Is it a work of God? Or is it a work of man in religion? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And so... Getting this? Yeah, this is God's work right here. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. This minister is just a co-laborer with him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two things are going to hinder this work right here. Bad ministry or unbelief. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I promise you, if you get the right ministration of the Word of God and you receive it by faith, God is faithful. Yes, sir. Amen. The one who called you is faithful who also will do it. Remember when Paul wrote about the Philippians and he said, he said, I thank my God upon every, every remembrance of you. Having confidence. Being confident. Or no, at first he says, he said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Mm -hmm. Now Paul couldn't thank God for the Galatians that way. The Galatians had already been removed from the grace of Christ into another gospel. So when Paul writes Philippians 6 and says being confident of this very thing that as Paul prayed and gave thanks to God as he remembered the Philippians and their faithful fellowship from the first day until now, Paul was confident that he which begun a good work in you shall perform it till the day of Christ. Amen. He didn't have that confidence about all. Amen. That is not a passage on eternal security. It's a, it's, a, it's a passage dealing with the performance of this good work. The one who began it will perform it. Remember what he said about the Galatians? He said, are you so foolish having begun? Yeah. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Yeah. You hear me? Yes. Yeah. Quit letting people rip your Bible into 10 verses out of context Amen. and think that's the only Bible you need to know. Here's eternal security. Yes. Romans 8, 38, 39, <laughs> Philippians 1. Quit letting people do your Bible that way. Amen, brother. Paul's confidence that this good work begun in the Philippian is going to be performed until the day of Christ. Remember, every man's work shall be manifest for the day he shall declare it. And he's confident that that work's going to be performed in the Philippians until the day of Christ. Amen. But he had already wrote to the Galatians and said, you did run well, who did hinder you? Yeah. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you mm -hmm. that you should not obey the truth before whose yes. eyes Jesus Christ have been set forth evidently crucified among you? Mm. Amen. Have you suffered so many things in vain if it yet be in vain? That's your King James Bible. Yep. Yes, sir. There's more in there than Ephesians 1, 3 and Ephesians 2, 8. <laughs> Colossians 2, 10. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. There's more in that book than that. Amen. This is the work that's going to be revealed and made manifest. And so Paul, in light of this, Paul had was given grace, remember, the grace of God through faith. Well, what did Paul receive grace to do? He received grace to lay the foundation of the building. Meaning, if you're not building upon the Pauline foundation, you're not even doing the right work. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. That's a lot of Christianity out there. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're trying to build on Moses and and, and listen, we understand that Christ is the chief cornerstone of the apostles and prophets. Yeah. But what we're saying here is that Paul laid the foundation of the church. He laid the preaching of Jesus Christ, the faith of the Son of God. He laid that foundation and we are to build upon the foundation laid by Him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We also saw that as the wise master builder, Paul in his church epistles gave us the blueprints and the pattern of how we are to build upon that foundation laid by him. Mm -hmm. The purpose of this, of this doctrine is for godly edification unto godliness. Not only does Paul show us the pattern and the design of how we build men unto godliness, he also gives us the very unsearchable riches and all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge to build upon that foundation. If you want the gold and the silver and the precious stones that he's referring to, you're going to have to mine them out of his epistles. Amen. Amen. Because he was given the grace not only to lay the foundation, but he was given the grace to preach the unsearchable riches yeah. of Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen, brother. And to make known among the Gentiles what is the riches 
of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of Amen. glory. Amen. You know what the gold, silver, and the precious stones are? It's Christ in you. Yeah. Yes. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Not Republican politics. Amen. And anti-abortion. Oh, I'm God against abortion. God's got to bless me when I get there. We'll see. Huh. I mean, the dogs are anti-abortion. You got it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Did you get that, Bill? Yeah, I got that. <laughs> uh, people think that because they got right, right leaning politics, somehow they they think that's what a Christian is today, as a conservative. Right. right yep. Amen. Amen. Or stand, listen, man, the church ought to possess a wisdom so high that the world can't even attain to it. Right. Right. That they can't that's discern it. Right. We ought to be a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Amen. We are. The world ought to look at us and not even understand what is it Christ said about them born of the Spirit. He said the wind bloweth. He said the wind bloweth in the trees and it bloweth where it listeth. And you can see it, you can hear it, but you cannot tell from whence it came. So is everyone born of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The world shouldn't understand or be able to discern our actions. We ought to be walking and attaining unto a wisdom much higher than anything ever found in this world. That's right. Amen. We ought to know what heart has not known, what heart has not imagined, what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard. Yeah. Amen. 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 So Paul received these blueprints, and he gave us the blueprint, he gave us the riches. And now he says, I've laid the foundation and another built it there upon. Well, what does that mean? Now here, here's where they just transition the works with no authority to do so. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about here? We're talking about the ministration of grace through faith. Yeah. Yeah. How does another man want to build upon that foundation? He's going to build upon that foundation by running his truck. <laughs> Every time you go to church, somebody's building upon that foundation. You attend the university, somebody's building upon that foundation. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Tick tock. What's God going to find when He rips through your building? Facebook memes or scripture? Oh, there you go. Amen. 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 Sean Hannity talking points. We'll throw preachers in there too. Is he going to find Baptist creeds, Baptist doctrines? He's going to find the counsels. When he examines the counsels of, 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 of your heart, is he going to find something written there with the Spirit of the living God upon fleshly tables of the heart? Amen. Amen. Get him. Now Paul's talking to you like a child here. Yep. Yes, sir. But as you progress through this, you start to understand what he meant with these things. Because mm -hmm. right now he's just talking to a bunch of little babies that can't comprehend what I'm talking about, about right. the fleshly tables of the heart being ministered not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God and things of that nature. Yes. But somebody's building upon that foundation. But notice what he says. Another buildeth thereupon. But let what? Yeah. Every man take heed how what? Yeah. Yeah. So it ain't just the responsibility of the speaker and the teacher and the preacher. It is your responsibility to take heed. Because remember, there's a minister, but it can only get here through faith. Yes, sir. So you have to be careful what you believe, what you receive, what you take in. Yes, Amen. Amen. You better take heed what's being built inside of you. That's right. Because it's going to be manifest one day before God. Amen. Let every man take heed how he buildeth there upon. Another's building upon that foundation. So how does a man build upon this foundation? 
you build upon that foundation, what's being built upon that foundation is the doctrine that you're receiving. And be not conformed, there it is again, this world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you can't define this world after getting out of Paul's epistles, you wasn't paying attention. He talks about it over and over. <clears throat> be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Yeah. By the renewing of your what? Mind. That's what you're supposed to do after you get saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the work Paul's describing there in Corinthians. I've laid the foundation of others building thereupon. And what's being built inside of your inner man is going to do one of two things. You're either, you're either receiving things that are going to conform you to this world, or you're receiving things that are transforming you by the renewing of your mind. There you go. Amen. Two wisdoms. The wisdom of this world and the wisdom of God. The wisdom of this world will conform you to this world and the wisdom of God will transform you into the glorious image of His beloved Son, yeah. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen? And what is this new mind? It is a mind capable of proving and searching and examining what is good, acceptable, and perfect unto God. It is a mind that's been fully instructed and can examine in every decision of his life, in every decision, what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. You're no longer directing, you're, you're no longer, you're being transformed. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing after salvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is being transformed by the renewing of our mind. This is the work Paul's talking about here. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Amen. Because this minister and this receiver here are all doing the same work. Now, let, 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 me, let me tell you, let me, let me say it like this. You can receive bad doctrine through faith. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can reject good doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. There may be a good minister right here. We, 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 we deal with people all the time about rightly dividing the word truth. Mm -hmm. The gospel of your salvation. Trying to help yeah. people. Yeah. A vast majority of them reject it and that's going to be manifested one day. Sure. Amen. Yeah. 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 Sure. Right. It ain't my responsibility to get in there and be like, no, you've got to believe this. Get inside the... <laughs> Yeah. All I can do is minister. Mm -hmm. The work of God's actual grace cannot do anything until it's believed. Amen. 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 And so a man stands there, he may receive into his inner man bad doctrine, he may reject good doctrine, or he may receive good doctrine and reject bad doctrine, but it's all doing the work. Yep. Every bit of it. So what are we to do? We're to take heed. Mm. Amen? Yeah, that's good. It's going to be revealed one day. What's, what's God actually going to reveal <laughs> in that inner man? What's He actually going to reveal? Look at 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who, will both, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the Hearts. There you go. Mm -hmm. well, guys, I've studied this stuff for years, man. This verse right here. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stuff. Mm. You know, if, if, if a man's wanting to write a book, he can, he can talk to you about gold as deity. In that Bible, gold represents the silver is redemption. So therefore, the silver that we build is the souls that we lead to Christ. <laughs> yeah. And then the precious stones over here in the wood. Wow. Right? Remember, Paul's talking to babies. Amen. They don't know what gold represents, but they know what gold is. It's a valuable metal. Of more value than stubble. Mm -hmm. Quit getting in your own way. 
Let's read the passage. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, and I've studied this for you guys, and I'm going to try to present these things as I understand it. Ruckman thinks that these are works. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I hate to pick on Ruckman because every Baptist preacher I ever heard preach thought these were works. Yeah, you're right. I picked up Cornelius Stam over at the house yesterday, and he had the word rewards, plural. Mm -hmm. They just can't help it. Because they got to write something. They obviously don't understand the passage if they're adding plurals to singulars. That's right. So what are they doing writing five pages on it? Because they're too proud to sit down and say, I don't know. Amen. And they have flooded this world with ignorant books void of any knowledge of God and darkened counsel without knowledge. Amen, amen. 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 That's the book of Job, in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. What is being revealed is the work of faith upon this foundation. That's what the gold, the silver, the precious stones, the wood, hay, and stubble. You're all receiving something into your inner man upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. That's mm. good. Mm. And this is what Paul said. Mm -hmm. Now watch. Here's, a, here's an example. This is actually written to the minister. First Corinthians is written to the church. Mm -hmm. This one's actually written to the minister. Remember the two workers? Yep. Yeah. The minister and the hearer of faith? Yeah. Paul talks about two men who concerning the truth of error saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow what? Faith. What do you think happens when your faith gets overthrown? You get destroyed. No more edification for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Alright, so their faith is overthrown. Nevertheless, regardless, what stands sure? Amen. 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 Jesus Christ is yeah. sure, boys. Amen. Amen. <laughs> If we believe not yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. There ain't no burning up that foundation. That foundation is sure, Bill. Yeah. It's precious. Yeah. Amen, brother. Now their faith is overthrown, but regardless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. God looks down upon this world and he sees some of his saints ensnared in Catholicism and Methodist churches where they're no work of faith is being done. Their faith is overthrown. They're shipwrecked. They're ensnared by the devil. Yep. Ever learning. Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But he knows each and every one of his. <laughs> Amen. Uh -huh. wow. Yes, sir. Yeah, praise That's the Lord. Good Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart what? Amen. This stuff up here. There's two mysteries at work right now. The mystery of iniquity and the mystery of godliness. Yep. Mm -hmm. And all of you that name the name of, the name of Christ are a part of iniquity. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now look. Overthrown faith. Foundation of God is sure. He knows them that are His. But yep. in a great house. What are we talking about? We're talking about the building of God, aren't we? Mm -hmm. But in a great house... There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. Some to honor, some to dishonor. Yep. Now let me let me put this in perspective. You use silverware to put in your mouth. You put what comes out the other side in a clay vessel. Right. Mm. You all got houses. Unless you just got money to waste, none of you have a gold toilet. Or a gold trash can. <laughs> What's Paul talking about here? He's talking about the house of God. Yep. Church of the <laughs> that there are people with overthrown faith that God knows who they are and his foundation is sure. But Paul wants Timothy to know in a great house there are vessels of gold and silver and some of wood and some to honor, some to dishonor. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Yeah. You get it? Mm -hmm. In other words, these men right here, that these people allowing this error to overthrow their faith is going to cost them something in the house of God. Amen. Because it ain't about what you do. It's about what God does in you. Amen, Amen brother. Amen. That's right. Yeah. And when you let your faith, when you let something come in and overrule the authority of the Word of God and overthrow your faith and it's no longer subject to His truth, mm. yeah. that's going to cost you that's right. at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What is, what is, what is being, what is, what is this gold, silver, and precious stones? What is this work that's being done? Well, Paul says, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by who? Us. So what is the minister's ministry? The epistle mm -hmm. of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Written not with what? Yeah. But with the spirit of what? Yeah. Where? What's the minister of God doing? He's writing with the spirit of the living God in your fleshly tables of yes, sir. Amen. 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 That means when you read that book, you know what you know what you know you're being you're being in the spirit of God is engraving. Yes. You're not being your heart ain't being written upon with ink. <laughs> it's being written upon yeah. with God's spirit. Amen. An engraving of the Spirit of God, not upon stone, but in a fleshly table of the heart. Wow. Amen, mm -hmm. brother. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. So what are what is the gold, silver, precious stones? Well, there's two types of work here, and I'm gonna have to stop, but give me a few minutes. Mm -hmm. What is being built here is what is being received. What's being built in your inner man is what's being received in you. Yes. Yes. When God examines your heart and the hidden counsels of your heart, what's He going to find? Mm. Is He going to find politics? Mm. What's He going to find inside of you? Mm. If I said, if I said and say, <coughs> remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope, do you know what I'm talking about? A spiritual man can judge those things and discern those things. A natural man can. Amen, brother. If you hear the Spirit of God talk and you have no comprehension of what's being said, mm -hmm. that is a testimony of where you are <laughs> in this. Do you think God is looking to give great reward and great positions in His house to a bunch of people that can't even discern speech? Mm. Yeah. they can't spot a lie from the truth they can't discern light from darkness right from wrong good from evil mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. but I go to church and I do this and I do that good for you right. I'm a deacon. don't mean anything to God <laughs> what did he say I'm a deacon we got a good deacon <laughs> but God is looking for men the gold, silver, and the precious stones is the building up of His doctrine His grace, His word inside of us preparing us with those great riches remember when Paul said when Paul said all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, what? Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What is the Word of God doing? It's thoroughly furnishing you unto all good works. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Gold, silver, precious stones, what that stuff. Now, when I look at this, man, when I look at this, I see, number one, I see gold, silver, and precious stones won't burn up. That's a category. What ain't so will burn up. That's a category. So there are eternal and temporal things 
that Paul lays out here. Those are two categories. One will burn, and when he when it, when he says when that day comes, if any man's work which he hath built abide, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work be burned, he shall suffer loss. Yeah. Now, not only do I see here that category of things that burn and things that won't burn. There's also a degrading value as you progress through it. Gold and silver won't burn, but which one's more valuable? Precious stones won't burn, they'll abide, but what's more valuable, gold or silver? Well, gold, silver, then precious stones. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Silver's more valuable than precious stones. The value is degrading as you go through it. Yeah. Wood, hay, stone. Amen. Gold. There are six, six things that can be built upon that foundation. Three will burn up, three won't. But some, in each one of these categories, there's a degrading value. Amen. You say, why are you pointing that out? Pastor, because I'm going to show you some things that you're just not going to hear other brethren talk about because they don't believe the Bible the way I believe the Bible. If you look at Romans as the foundation that Paul laid, do you know Paul addresses six churches after the book of Romans? One, Two, three, four, five, six. Corinth, Galatia, Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, Thessalonians. Six churches addressed after the foundation of Romans. What did he say about the Corinthians? That they were babies. That they were carnal. Amen. Amen. Moreover, brethren, I would not have you ignorant how that all our fathers passed under the cloud and into the Red Sea and were all baptized unto Moses and all drank of the same spiritual drink and ate of the same spiritual meat. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Yes, sir. Don't want them ignorant, does he? Yeah, you can be baptized into the body. You can eat the same food, drink the same drink. He said, I want every one of you to know God wasn't well pleased with every Jew that came out of Egypt. Amen, brother. And he says, wherefore, let any one of you, he said, let every one of you that think he standeth take heed lest he fall. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you see what's going to happen? Quote five verses the rest of your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. how, do you think, how do you think the Corinthians were fair? In that day. Not very good. What about the Galatians? Mm -hmm. So what about the Ephesian? Well, the Ephesian is starting to come yeah. mm -hmm. into the knowledge. Right. But what does Paul say? That we be no more children. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that they might not grow up. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The Ephesian doctrine is for you to be enlightened in your understanding. And then you can begin to walk. Not as other Gentiles walk. But you can begin to walk in that renewed mind of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not, listen guys, I'm not dogmatic on this. But it's just a funny thing to me that after the foundation of Romans, there are six different churches Paul addresses. And there are six classifications being built upon that foundation. Mm -hmm. See, I just believe in my Bible. Amen. And so you just happen to have also in Paul's epistles as you go from Corinthians to Thessalonians, you just happen to have a progression of doctrine taking you from babies to men walking worthy of God and His glory through receiving the Word of God in truth. That's Thessalonians 2.13. Now the renewing of the mind. So what in first in, in if, if you if you know anything about Paul's epistles, guys. There's a lot of truth to what I'm saying because for whatever reason, Romans through Galatians 
He uses the phrase, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. No, you not. No, you not. No, you not. And then you get to Ephesians, disappears. And you think that's just a coincidence, do you? Because what Paul is doing from Romans up to Ephesians is he's systematically destroying and tearing down the wisdom of this world. Amen. And what he does in Ephesians onward is begin to build up the wisdom of God within that inner man. Yeah. Amen. 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 The Marines know how to do that yep. stuff. Don't I was they? <laughs> Hey man, they bring them out of their head, don't they? Yep. That's right. Hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> the renewing of the mind is the tearing down of the wisdom of man and of the world and rebuilding within that mind all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are hid in God and His Son. Yeah. And every man's work one day is going to be made manifest. Right. Amen. Amen. What is built upon that foundation. And it'll, it'll end, and, and we'll pick up with this some more next week, guys, because i still got a lot to get to here. But Paul says in, in uh, when he says, every man's work shall be made manifest, look at what he says here, for the day shall declare it. What? The work. Of what sort? What? There's only one work. And it's going to be one of these six. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And every man's work is going to be revealed of what sort it is. And the day shall declare it. What day is he talking about? The yeah. day when the Lord comes. Yeah. And will make manifest the counsels of hearts. Yeah. Paul says, holding forth the word of Christ, the word of life, that I may rejoice in what day? That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Who was he? He was a minister. And he's telling these Philippians to hold forth this word of life that in the day of Christ he may rejoice that he has not run nor labored in vain. Well, what is his rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at what? You know what my joy and my hope and my rejoicing is? He says, for you are our glory and joy. Mm -hmm. You know what my joy and rejoicing is and my hope, what I'm looking for? Is that through the faithful study and ministration of that book, not by playing the politician and shaking the hands and kissing the babies and making sure all of you love me and just got to be around me. Through the faithful study and ministration of that book, That's right. my rejoicing and my joy is you in the presence of Jesus Christ at His coming when my work and your work is made manifest. Yes. My ministry and your receiving of faith being put on display by God the Father. Amen. That is my joy. That is not, listen, that is my hope, my joy. And my crown, it is my reward. Yeah. It's not a crown God's going to... The reward I'm going to get for my labor is in that day I will rejoice that it was not in vain. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Yep. We are preparing eternal glory and eternal reward within the body of Christ. Amen. And so... Why do you think Paul is... Guys, do you think Paul's worried that these Philippians ain't going to make it to heaven? Is that what you think he's worried about? He's worried about their presentation in the day of Christ. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this is why he said, I've sent Timothy. Because I have no other man so like-minded who yep. will naturally care for your state. Not your standing. Not your position. That's right. Your state. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? For all men seek their own and not the things that be of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. You know what Paul just said? There are very few men that understand this stuff, and the vast majority of preachers are seeking their own. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yep. So a lot of the times you're just gonna have to get in book. You you can't find a preacher that's gonna minister to these things. A lot of times you're just gonna have to dig them out yourself. That's right. 
Amen. get in a book and study it. Yep. Yep. And if you find a man that teaches and ministers these things, man, you do like Timothy, and you hug hips with that man, and you stay with that man, and that man will commit some things to you, and then you take him and commit Amen. them to others who should be able yeah. to teach others also. Amen. 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 You find way across the country. We are, we are preparing through the ministration of the Word of God. We are putting within the believer all the riches of the glory of God's grace for the day that He displays those things in the ages to come. Amen. Amen. Any questions on this? Next week we'll get into what happens if the work burns, what happens if the work abides. And then, then I know one of Paul's know ye not statements there. And the know ye not statement is about you as the temple of God. And it's in context of the work being burned. And he's, he's saying, do you not know that you are the temple of God? Amen. And if any man defile the temple of God, Amen. so much for saying the work burns up, but not the man. This is what he says. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Yep. Deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus yep. Christ. Amen. Right. Sounds Amen. like spiritual destruction to me. Mm -hmm. yep. He didn't say that the soul may be saved. He himself shall be saved. Okay. When that fire rips through that spirit of that man and goes through there and tries everything that's built up spiritually in that man, by the time it's done, if that man has defiled God's temple, built upon that foundation with wood, hay, and stubble, it's going to end in spiritual destruction for that man. This is why Paul said, many walk of whom I've told you and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction. Yep. Wow. But yep. Paul said, the authority given unto me for edification Amen. and not destruction. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Don't you love a King James Bible? Hey. Destruction is the opposite of what's being done there in Corinthians, the building up. Amen. So if you don't build properly, God's going to tear it down. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Uh, Brother Kenneth, will you close us out in prayer? Yeah. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. Lord, we want to thank you for the word that we had this morning. And, uh, for the ministering of it. And uh, Lord, as we head out to the mission field, we just ask that you would guide us, direct us, keep us safe, and bring us back here at the next appointed time. Yes. We also thank you that you brought Brother Bill with us this morning and yes. his uh, yes. doors, yes. that uh, we, we had them back with us. We just love them being here, and it was a blessing to see them. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, quick, 